Hello, my name is Joe, and in this course, I'm going to take you through how to create photogrammetry models for films, TV, and games. If you find this helpful, please like and subscribe and hit that bell for more videos. And don't forget to check out my website, 3dassetlibrary.com, for Unreal and Unity Engine assets. Also, if you find this helpful, please check out my Patreon below for exclusive content relating to photogrammetry, games. So, what we're going to do in this section is we're going to now turn our dense cloud or our depth maps into a 3D mesh. And first of all, we're going to use the depth map. And what then I'm going to do is uh, you'll see uh, the sort of differences. It'll probably be subtle differences with something like this uh, between the depth maps and the dense clouds. So what we'll do is we'll go right click on our chunk, process, build mesh. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select from the depth maps and we're going to set our quality to, um, we'll set it to high. And um, no, we'll, we'll leave it on medium for the minute. Leave it on medium. So our face count um, is the amount of polygons. So this will be in the millions generally. This will be uh, hundreds of thousands and this will be tens of thousands. Just leave it on high um, because what this will do, this will later down the line, we'll be able to extract our normal maps from uh, this. So we don't have to export our high, um, ultra high polygon mesh if we don't want to. If we click on advanced, um, generally I haven't ever touched any of these. Um, again, I'm trying to keep it that this is a universal thing, so we're trying to avoid using stuff that may be uh, unique to meta shapes. So we'll just leave that exactly as it is, and then we'll press OK. As always, this can um, depend on how long this is going to take, can be depend on your hardware and the mesh. So what we'll do again here is pause and wait until it's finished. So now that the depth map to mesh has processed, you can see here that it's very different. So we've now got a full complete mesh up here. And um, when we zoom in, it's no longer points. Ignore the fact it's distorted at the moment because we haven't generated our texture. But you can see here that it's a full thing. If you're still getting um, points like this, it could be that your mesh isn't selected. Sometimes it, it doesn't select it. So what you need to do is just look for 3D model, double click. And um, you can see here that on medium quality, it's actually turned out very well. And um, what we'll do is we'll move to um, doing a dense cloud to 3D mesh, um, just to, so you know how to do it. And um, you'll probably probably see um, some slight differences in the uh, sort of metal, it might probably be a little bit more bumpy, things like that. So what we'll do is we'll move over to our next uh, part of this section. So in this part, what we're going to do is we're going to generate a mesh from a dense cloud this time. Now, just to be aware, you don't have to do uh, generate a model from a mesh from a depth map and from a dense cloud at the same time. I'm just showing you both procedures so that in the future, you know which ones to try if say for instance depth maps don't work out you can try the dense clouds and um, so uh, what we'll do is right click on chunk process build mesh then in the source data drop down list we'll select dense cloud and this is similar to before and we want surface type to arbitrary 3d and um, we want the face count to high you can see here that um, we've got it's got a lot of a lot of polygons here and um, the advanced setting should be like that we'll just leave them as they are and what we'll do is we'll press ok as usual this will do the processing and um, i will join you once it's finished so now this is done you can see instantly we've got some differences here um, compared to our depth map uh, you can see the depth map was all one giant piece this has been um lots of a little more uh, lots of little pieces pieces it looks more like um bath foam you know and um uh, yeah, we're not getting much difference in the metals here, but you can see that the way this is, the white paper is a lot more bumpy than the depth maps. And I think because the, uh, the photos are generally uh, very consistent and match up well, we're not going to get much difference. One thing I will say, um, for whatever reason, a dense cloud is often faster at building a mesh than a depth map. So always bear that in mind. Um, this took me probably about a minute and a half to build. Um, so yeah, bear that in mind. Um, you can just see here that, as I say with the depth map, it's, it's a sort of a good example, this actually, the depth map had this as one giant sheet. So it's looked at it and thought, ah, oh, this is all linked together, giant sheet. Whereas this is broken up into tiny individual little pieces. And you can see that, you know, potentially you could get a lot more detail from certain things uh, than depth maps. So I've shown you both, both procedures here of what to do and both methods. And, um, this is so that you have the choice to do 
uh, whichever one you want to do and whichever one works for you. As I say, the more you do this, the more you'll figure out what what will work best for what object. And um, so it is just practice. And I'm just trying to show you as, as many things as possible um, to get you to where you want when scanning your 3D models. So we'll move on next to removing um, geometry that we don't want on the model inside of uh, our software. So what we're going to do here is we're going to now remove these little bits of white uh, all over the object and some of this uh, white down here to basically have our final object ready for texturing. So what we'll do is we've got two um, things to do here. So we'll click on model, we'll go to gradular selection, in criterion drop down to connected component size that will process and then I'll just move that over and what we'll do is we'll increase our level so you can see as we increase our level it's turning things pink now if you go all the way to 100 it selects everything um, but if we back off just a bit it's selecting all these little pink bits here so what this is doing is this is looking for basically anything that isn't as big as this will be selected and um, then it allows us if we press delete to delete the excess there so you can see there we've started to tidy up our object already. So now what we can do is we can um, is we want to get someone rid of some of this white here. So what we do is we we'll select our marquee tool. Now I'm showing you inside of this. You can do this in your own 3D software when you export. Um, I prefer to do it in 3D software personally, but I'm just trying to show you in here. Most of the um, uh, photo scanning softwares have an ability like this, so it's uh, just selecting and uh, deleting you know, parts of the mesh inside your project. So what you can do is remember to switch back to the navigation and um, to move so we can look now and then back to our selection tool. You can see here that we're starting to delete. Um, what you can do, because obviously this has no bottom to the hammer, is that we can actually get this as close as possible, get our marquee tool, delete the whole lot. And um, there we go. So we have our finished mesh here. And um, obviously, because it's not a full 360 degree, we've got a gap in the bottom, but this is your bog standard 3D scanned mesh. So what we'll do in the next tutorial is that we will um, we will generate the final texture for this. So it shows you how much this will improve in um, quality. It won't be so blurred, um, things like that. So let's move on to the next section.